Hello, hello, hello. Uh -huh. It's really amazing to see all of you here this evening. I'm very, very excited. Uh -huh. I have seen who, Edda. Uh, yes, 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 yes. We are ending January in style. By the way, for some reason, January did not have 97 weeks, or is it for me only? Or this is what we call adulting. <laughs> For the first time, January is not uh, 90 days. I think this school business, uh, it was a good idea for schools to open later in the month. I think it really pushed the, the, the days and we did not notice that time has really gone. But we are really grateful that we are here this evening and that we have come to see the end of January. And uh, we look forward to a successful year. We look forward to a year of learning. We look forward to a year of growth. And we look forward to a year of positionings to, to where God intends us to be. And uh, of course, a better still, this is a year of impact. So I hope you're looking forward to making impact uh, wherever it is that you are and whatever it is that you're doing. All right. So if you're joining us for the first time, I welcome to Get It Right with Atara Solutions. I say again, our program is called Get It Right with Atara Solutions. Uh, this is a webinar series that seeks to demystify issues in uh, entrepreneurship and employment. We do this, uh, we have done this since uh, June 2020. We are currently on season four. If you have missed most of our webinars, actually 99% of our webinars, I think the one that we hosted, uh, Johnson Mokaz, is the one that uh, uh, YouTube blocked because of uh, music and copyright issues. However, if you've missed any of our uh, webinars, we have uploaded them on our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is called Get It Right with Atara Son uh, Solutions. All right, Catherine is our sign language interpreter. We seek to be uh, inclusive. We seek to engage everyone. We seek to be together with uh, uh, as many people as we can. So we, we are trying to be very, very inclusive and intentional about diversity and inclusion. And uh, yeah, um, at this point in time, allow us to uh, give a shout out to the people who support us in bringing these webinars to you. Uh, running these webinars for free for the last three years has not been easy. However, we are grateful that we get partners who support us and who <clears throat> believe in, in our dream of making sure that we are changing the world through information, which is uh, what we say our mission is. And therefore, uh, Get It Right with Atara Solutions is brought to you. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. I kind of think everyone knows me. But yeah, uh, Frida Winga will kill me if, if, if she had me say that. Uh, my name is Grace Nzula. I am or at the CHRP Grace Nzula. I am an HR professional. I run a company called Atara Solutions where we are doing HR consultancy and training. Uh, please uh, engage us for all your trainings. Engage us for all your uh hr consulting needs and of course we also do coaching and support people who are going into business and they're looking to uh grow their career and of course with me i have two co-hosts i have Catherine tidandi Catherine tidandi is our sign language interpreter uh she is awesome at what she does and we are really really honored that she believes uh in in whatever it is she's doing and she's making sure that we are inclusive and of course we have kevin adipo i don't know where kevin is at uh -huh. Um, Catherine, you need to log in with your panelist link. But yes, we also have Kevin at Depot. Now, uh, Get It Right with Atara Solutions is brought to you by Atara Solutions in partnership with a number of organizations. Um, where are you? My Lord, sometimes technology decides, you know, uh, here we are. All right, so these are our partners. And if you wish to partner with us, you can reach out. Uh, we will give you our rate card and uh, we will we believe in supporting businesses. And of course, yes, we have Balcon Housing. Balcon Housing is a real estate and property management company. 
uh, they are located here in Nairobi. If you're looking to buy a parcel of land, if you're looking to sell, if you're looking to have somebody manage your property, then Balkon Housing are the people for you. We also have Stallion Construction Company. Stallion Construction, uh, like the name spells it, are into construction. Uh, if you're looking to uh, renovate your house, if you're looking to change uh, anything in the office, then Stallion Construction will be able to do that for you. Then we have Pathway Solution Services. Pathway Solution Services is a company that is offering training on their LMS. LMS is a learning management system. Uh, Frank has been our biggest support. He joined us uh, in season three. So us through season two and season three. We're really honored, Frank. Thank you so much for creating impact for the people. Quite a number of our followers were able to actually win free trainings, which include a certificate on their LMS. LMS is learning management uh, uh, platform. And even our fellow people in, in Uganda, they were able to also train through the LMS. So Pathway Solutions, we appreciate your partnership. And of course, we have Institute of Pension Management. Institute of Pension Management offers CHRP courses. If you're an HR here and you wish to take on your CHRP, then Institute of Pension Management is your go-to choice. They are located on Ojijo Road. However, they also have evening classes. And it's one of those colleges that actually have good parking, so you don't have to worry about that. You also don't worry, don't have to worry about maneuvering within city center. Uh, Institute of Pension Management uh, for your CHRP courses. And of course, uh, they offer pension management courses. Uh, if you're a trustee or you're looking to understand your pension scheme, they, they offer solutions in the pension uh, space. So Institute of Pension Management, you can check them out on, on, on uh, social media pages. Or you, if you wish to get more details, uh, link up with me and I'll be able to hook you up with them. So don't be stuck on where to do your CHRP, right? Yes. And then, of course, we have Vanessa Training Institute for all your carpentry needs. Uh, we actually had a scholarship ad announcement last week. Uh, we got quite a number of students who came in. They were interviewed, and today we received information. So 40 students have been fully sponsored to take on carpentry. We are grateful for that. Uh, if you, you have a brother or sister who wishes to study carpentry, then please send them to us. And then we have Wicklin. Wicklin is a carpet cleaning and cleaning solutions company. If you have a, they have a machine that cleans your carpet within six minutes. I repeat, six minutes. So if they actually do pick up and delivery if you're within Nairobi. So they'll come pick up your carpet today. And of course, because of the logistics, they'll deliver it tomorrow. So within 24 hours, they're able to send back your carpet. So do not worry about anything. Call upon Wicklin and they'll be able to sort you out. You should check out their Instagram page. They're doing an excellent, excellent job. They will also clean your cap, cut, curtains and your sofas if you wish. And then we have uh, Suluhu Mediation Center. Yes, I, became, I am a certified professional mediator. This was done in December through Suluhu Mediation Center. If this is something you've been trying to do or something that you have always wanted to do, then please get in touch with Suluhu Medical uh, uh, gosh, Mediation Center. I will be announcing their next uh, physical classes, but their calendar is actually out. They have a online session so you don't have to worry about leaving your desk by the way the online sessions are very interactive imagine you have to have your video on and they are so interactive you do not notice that it was 8 a.m and now it's five o'clock i totally totally enjoyed uh learning with suluhu mediation center you should give them um an opportunity and then we have profiles international profiles international does a psychometric assessment they also certify gino's uh, emotional intelligence coaches uh, they also uh, deal with personalities. They have an awesome, awesome package on DISC. And then quite a number of things that are offered in terms of growing you as an individual. And then, uh, so I'll be sharing what they have on offer for us. And then we have El Samea. El Samea Conservation is actually a, a hotel or uh, yeah, in Naivasha. They actually could be the one hotel that has hippos show up at night. Uh, they have beautiful, oh my God, their food is delicious. And then on top of that, the beauty about it is it's a quiet, nice, serene place. Yani, it's a lake view. Like you can have lunch as you watch the, the, the Columbus monkeys. You can have lunch, the ocean, I mean, the Lake Naivasha is just right there. They have greenery. You walk around the place, the warthogs are just feeding there. They have trees, I mean, surely. And then from the room, you can actually, the room facing the ocean, like from your bed, you don't really have to hustle. So if you're stuck on when to think or where to think, or you want to go for your honeymoon, uh, El Samea, please check them out on Instagram, check them out, out on, um, on Facebook, and also get in touch with me. I'll be able to send you some nice, nice photos. And of course, we have Kapla Mintito. 
for those of you who appreciate mabuyu for those of you who appreciate some delicious coastal uh snacks uh, they sell simos gel they sell uh mabuyu they also sell cashew nuts among others and then we have Papas. Papas is a tech company. If you're looking for a HRIS system, then Papas are able to customize one for you. They have a beautiful, beautiful system. If you're a recruiter and you're looking to have a recruiting system attached to your website, they do that for you. And uh, yes, uh, this is the course that is offered by Sulu Mediation Center. They are going to Nakuru from the 13th of to 17th of February from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's only 40,000, and this is gonna be in Nakuru. Please take on this opportunity. If you cannot be able to go to Nakuru, they also have um, they have uh, online sessions. So get in touch with me or check them out. Their numbers are on your screen. You can screenshot, and uh, you'll be able to know more. They're also available on Instagram, uh, I mean, on Facebook and social media pages. And then, of course, we are looking to have um, a public speaking class, a master class. So if you're here and you've been wondering what to do with your public speaking, please join our class. This is brought to you by Atara Solutions. Myself and a, and a voice coach will be taking this uh, uh, training. We'll be training people on public speaking. Please do not be left out. Uh, public speaking has been listed as uh, one of the major skills to have for 2023. So don't be left behind. And then, of course, we have the uh, discipline management at the workplace uh, training coming up on the 9th of uh february this is from 9 a.m to 12 o'clock uh this is uh, somebody asked me what is the scope it is the legal framework around discipline management at the workplace please bring all your questions questions so that we can also be able to uh, answer them of course we our speaker on that day is uh, none other than rob lingoja he's the head of employee relations and wellness human resource division at kcb and he's an ER, ER for, uh, practitioner, he's a lawyer, he's an HR, so you guys will be in, in good hands. All right, uh, yes, I am one of those people who are paid to talk, but tonight uh, we are looking to discuss uh, performance management. You know, I, I'm, unfortunately, this is a topic that a lot of people have been taking for granted, but as well, it is listed as the keen, uh, one of the keen things uh, entrepreneurs will be looking into going forward. Uh, 2023 2024 so if you're in this forum and you do not know how to measure performance thank you for joining us because you're about to know how and uh yes with us is none other than chrp lisa shaka she is a wonderful human being i must say that and uh lisa please tell us do you know a lot of people cannot as in i look at some kps and i'm like oh my god how will you measure that and then most of the KPIs are actually put in people's JDs before they are hired. Then this person comes and then they're not able to deliver. And you're wondering why. And this person cannot own those things. And like the other day, I had a friend of mine who was told that she was put on performance improvement plan. And the problem is not that she wasn't doing her work. It's because she wasn't doing what was on her KPI. She had been given different tasks that were not really answering to her KPI. So tell us, Lisa, how do we set KPIs, please? Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. I hope you can hear me. Loud and clear. Okay, great. Uh, I think Kathleen will be joining us. Congratulations to you for embracing diversity. I think it's a very good thing. Um, we are going to have a conversation about performance management, specifically setting KPIs. So I will be sharing my screen shortly. Um, okay, you can see my screen. Okay, great. So we are going to have a conversation about um, setting KPIs. And uh, if you have any questions as a run through, please, you can drop it. And uh, I know Grace and the team will help me uh, to be able to pick out uh, some of the issues that I need to address. So I would like to build the context around performance management and setting the KPIs. Um, most organizations sit and uh, develop a strategy. So there's a, a connection between setting the strategy and executing that strategy. In between that is a process of performance management. And the process of performance management has a lot of elements in it. The first element is translating the strategy into business objectives. So that process of translating the strategy into KPIs and cascading the KPIs to functional 
and uh, individual scorecards is what makes this strategy to work. So then why is it important for us to, 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 to have that? And what are the principles that govern that? So one of the principles that govern the performance management in terms of building the context before we can start even talking about the KPIs, how we need to set them, is the frequent exchange uh, of constructive feedback. So this needs to be continuous. Um, from what Grace mentioned, she mentioned that somebody is given KPIs before even they join the organization. So there's the contextualizing of the performance objectives. Ownership, taking responsibility of personal development as an individual. So you're saying, this is what I need to do. How do I get to do it? And what are the enablers? And I think this is where most people talk about personal development plans. Having authentic conversation, no fear, no judgment. You're just having a conversation and enabling conversation. So we call them performance development conversations. Clarity, this is where the disconnect comes out most of the time where there are no clear goals and they're not aligned to the strategy. So we need to have in terms from a principal perspective foundation, clear goals aligned to the strategy and then the how and what. So to mean assessment against a clear criteria. So when you're talking about a clear criteria, if you are telling somebody on what they need to deliver, they need to see how success looks like. Yeah, and we'll be able to discuss using a few examples on how that would look like. Um, why is this a, a topic of discussion and why is it important? Uh, it helps us to be able to have clear expectations as leaders and uh, the teams that are below us, uh, they get to have clear expectations. So if you are a leader, you are able to define clear expectations and you are able to have even a better relationship. There's also the, that need to have strategic alignment. So the outcome of contextualizing aligning gives birth to employee productivity. And you know, most people are talking about mental wellness, performance improvement. So once you have a well-set KPI, you will support the employee wellness uh, from a, a holistic perspective. Then we won't have things that stress employees or a disconnect that create uh, conflict internally. Uh, setting proper KPIs, and I know we do conversations around performance versus potential. It helps people to be able to have talent development conversations. So it's a talent management enabler. And of course, above all, it an, an enhances employee engagement, which speaks to retention. So you will not have issues to do with retention if you are able to address all this, because most of the dissatisfaction that come from employees when they have unclear goals, goals which are ambiguous, and then conflict comes, the work relationship is strained, and that's why all this is really important. So what are the common pitfalls that we tend to get into when we are setting performance objectives? So we tend to set unrealistic goals. We also tend to focus on things that may not give us the results. So the goals are not very smart. Sometimes we underestimate the time, the time allocation of the goal, or we put a lot of time in it, so we get fatigued in the process of chasing the goal, or we put unrealistic timeline, and then we get stressed, uh, frustrated. We, if we, we needed structure around it, if we needed to engage stakeholders to make sure that that's clear, we don't have that opportunity. And then people, when make, they make mistakes, they don't learn from it. So not learning from the mistake is another pitfall. So if there are things that we did last year as a team and we're not able to learn from those things, then we'll get into those pitfalls. Uh, yeah, and so it becomes a, a kind of a cycle, not tracking progress. So how do then people tend to make sure that they track progress? We'll be able to discuss that as well. Setting negative goals, yeah? Uh, I, I know uh, there's a number of people who say in January to March, I need to lose weight. And then every other day you go to the weighing scale and you're trying to check whether you have lost weight. You get discouraged when you realize that you haven't lost weight. If you set an objective that you want to enhance your wellness by keeping a healthy lifestyle, probably losing weight will be an outcome out of that. By eating healthy, then you say, what are, what are the kind of things that you need to do? Eating healthy, exercising, you support them with key deliverables that will help you. But 
structuring a goal in a negative way, it's adding motivation to even the journey, uh, kicking off the journey towards uh, de delivering on that uh, goal. Having too many goals, where you set uh, 15 goals, and you're supposed to deliver them within one year, and you're one person, and then you get chaotic. Yeah, you are not able to prioritize. So the ability to prioritize and say, what are the three key important things that will have the most impact that I need to do? Not providing tools that will support the goal. So, and tools here become in two parts. There are tools of trade and there are tools in terms of skills. There are emerging needs, new ways of working. How do we make sure then within your team, you have checked out what are the skills gaps which are there? that will enable for the team, which, which will enable the team to be able to um, achieve the objectives. So how do we get to set SMART goals? Basics first, yeah? You have to be specific, who, what, where, when, why, which. So you have to clearly describe what is it that you need to achieve and there ought to be no ambiguity. So if you can be so specific who is involved, what is it that needs to be done? And what is the impact of that? When you say, what is it that is being done and how do we get to measure success? What are the success indicators in that? So you are moving from two in the context of, I am moving from 10 to 15. If it's a percentage, if you're moving in terms of reduction of complaints, you're moving from 100 to, or if, if it's a net promoter score that you need to improve, you're moving from a negative to a positive. So you also have to have the goal which is achievable. Those are the basics that we have always run, uh, done in, in theory in classes and then you're saying achievable how. Um, just making sure that these are standard of performance. And the relevance, uh, which is also a very important aspect, how does it connect to the purpose? Yeah, Is it a goal worth chasing? Because you can do things to tick a box and then you have a, a dozen of things that you're able to deliver but they, they are not relevant, of course, and having a timeline. And we spoke above about not having realistic timeline or underestimating the time that is taken for you to be able to deliver on a certain goal. So breaking into milestones can help somebody be able to see the progress they are making and having those uh, consistent uh, catch-ups to be able to establish where the gap is. So we'll go to a bit of practicals and say how not to set objectives and how to set objectives. And then we go ahead to set out um, a proper uh, objective from a functional level to the team member level. So if you set an objective and say randomly improve monthly reports, and then the measure of success is product, uh, produ produce timely report, timely is very ambiguous. Improve monthly reports from what to what. Uh, adhere to their formats, which formats from what to what. Uh, build capability of, of reports. It's so ambiguous that you cannot be able to measure it. But if you are to structure that into a KPI that can be able to be measured and which is uh, measurable, achievable in a timely manner, and you can be able to say, we are moving from here to here, then you would structure that KPI and say, reduce the average time for consolidating and improving monthly reports by the end of Q1 with zero errors standards of reference and in line with international standards and internal requirements. These are reference points. Then how would you measure success in that context? So reports sent out successfully by end of Q1. These are timeline. Production time reduced from two days to one day. So you are moving from two. All audit recommendations, actions in Q1 report. So it means there is action, are there deliverables which you can be able to relate to and be able to measure. Uh, resourcing time reduced from 90 days to 60 days, uh, specifically for HR professionals. Uh, it's, it's a common KPI. And then say, how do we, in talent acquisition, uh, what is it that we need to do to be more efficient? So it's like reduce the onboarding time, onboarding process from um, uh, to less than 60 days. So it means uh, that you are moving from 90 days, which is the current state, to a desired state of 60 days. And you're specific and they're saying, there are situations that we may not be able to do that, but you are targeting mid-level managers because then you are assessing the situation and saying, for maybe entry-level roles, you may need 30 days. 
for mid-level managers, you may need 60 days. And for senior uh, C-suit level, you may need uh, 90 days or six months because this, the, the standards of practice require them to have a longer notice period. Okay, I hope this is very clear. So how do we then set SMART objectives and how do we get to cascade them? So this is a random assumption that there's a business X which wants to grow and it wants to grow business revenue by 15% as an objective and improve net profit by 7%. So there are deliverables within that business that they need to deliver for them to be able to achieve that goal. So then there are initiatives that support that. Structuring the initiatives help you track progress and be able to go step by step. And even when you're having hurdles in between, you can be able to track and say, what are the hurdles? Where am I getting the hurdles? And how, how do I get to seek support from other stakeholders? And how do I get to collaborate? for me to be able to achieve this uh, objective. So operational expenses management, increase uh, in terms of brand visibility, um, onboarding to strategic partners. Uh, and then the measure of success is 7% growth in net profit. So when all is done, the reference point is, did we have a 7% growth in terms of net profit? Did we have a 15% uh, growth in revenue? And then allocating a weighting. A weighting helps us to be able to say how critical is the objective, yeah? So we are saying the criticality of the objective defines the weight that you allocate. So possibly for a specific business, this is really a major, a core objective, yeah? They must do for the business. So you may need to even revise the weighting and say this is critical, it's mission critical, and you're gonna put a 50% weighting on it. And then, of course, the timeline, which uh, is by December 31st of 2023. So if you are going to cascade that to a functional level, then you are going to pick the what of the business's growth, the how you are going to grow is operational expenses management. But for this specific case, we picked on onboarding three strategic business partner as we cascade that down to the team. So at a functional level or at departmental level, we can have that cascaded because you can see the what on the business level and the how, which is the deliverables. At the departmental level, the how of a business becomes the what of the functional level. So what happens in that context is you are building strategic alignment towards the overall a measure of success, which is 7% growth in net profit. To mean every initiative that everybody within the business is doing is towards supporting, deliver the, the success measure, which is being um, uh, measured in terms of 15% growth in revenue, 7% uh, growth in net profit. So then you go further and define, if you're picking out that on board three strategic business development partners within the business, then you say uh, from a functional level, we are going to onboard three strategic partners with a 40% contribution to the total revenue. You are very specific and you are saying what is it that it's going to do for the business. So the goal and the impact. What are the things that you need to do in terms of deliverables for you to be able to get there? Then you say you need to segment strategic partners and develop a go-to-market strategy, for example. Uh, define the terms of reference uh, and SLAs, uh, develop marketing incentives and all that. Then the result of that, the output will be market segmentation completed by 15th January 23, 2023. One of the things that has come commonly is if the, the objective is not quantitative, how do I get to measure it? So you can use a timeline to be able to measure the success of that. So if there are things that needs to be delivered at a certain time, then you target with a timeline that needs to be um, delivered uh, from a timeline perspective. So go to market strategy delivered by 31st of January, and you can see it's broken down what comes first from a prioritization perspective. We said failing to prioritize can make one fail on terms of uh, how they get to deliver. So market segmentation by 15th January, go to market strategy delivered by 31st of January, 
and the output of all that is 40% revenue contribution from okay. new partners, which are specific, the three strategic partners. So part of the other objective is improve operational expenses, keep within a certain margin. And uh, for, for this case, I said uh, below 11%. And uh, one of the things that would help the business do that from a functional level is automation of business processes, as an example. Then what happens in that context is the results will be able to come. Still, we have the waiting and we have the timeline on when that needs to be delivered. So then we break it down to the manager because we are discussing about setting smart objectives, cascading them and building alignment across all levels. Then you say implement partner service level agreements. You can notice that the what of the function or the how of the function becomes the what of the manager. So there's that uh, seven drawing across uh, and trying to be very uh, deliberate on creating strategic alignment of the objective and aligning it to the business strategy. So once the, the SLA and the SLA has an aspect of a three days TAT on servicing and improved partner net promoter score from 25, uh, positive 25 to positive 35. So it means a 10, 10 point improvement. So some of the deliverables that will support that is track partner servicing and identify pain points for action. Yeah, the result is three days TAT on servicing and the partner net for motor score of positive 35. The weighting to that ob objective to measure the criticality of that objective is 30%. So across all these levels, you are making sure that there's alignment first, there is the success measure and how does it support. So if the TAT is good on partner servicing, it supports the 40% revenue contribution to um, uh, revenue total contribution to the business from the new partners because servicing is a key enabler for relationship building. So then we go down and we say there's a team member who needs to have an objective. Then one of the objectives will be partner servicing is key. So it means partner relationship management to improve partner net promoter score and achieve a 40% contribution to the total revenue. So some of the deliverables for this team member to the function would be attend weekly partner meetings, and provide insights to improve partner servicing. So to, there are reports that the person will be able to do. So there are qualitative measures and there are quantitative measures. Yeah, but there's alignment in terms of what are the success in the indicators for all that. So 40% contribution of revenue and partner net promoter score. So it means within that business X, they have put measures in place to be able to measure the net promoter score they have put uh, uh, structures in place to be able to uh, measure the revenue and, and be able to segment the partners and say, this is the contribution that is coming from this specific partner. Uh, moving to a very interesting part that I like is measuring behavior, which speaks to shaping culture. So you can be able to use goals to shape behavior and this speaks to values and culture. So you can define that these are the desired behaviors that we want to promote within our business. So for example, as Kenyans, we, have str we struggle a lot with keeping time. So as part of building your culture, you say, no attending meetings, late. So you say, respecting time, yeah? We can take time in terms of uh, uh, executing. So we say, acting with a sense of urgency or the speed of execution. So those are the desired behaviors. Uh, sometimes we can talk and everybody's talking and then we create conflict and we are not inclusive. Then you say listening and being open to varied uh, ideas and opinions, being inclusive, yeah? Posture and active participation uh, within the team. Collaboration is a key, a key item, I think, across all organizations. Owning and learning from mistakes, yeah? So if you are saying you are owning and learning from mistakes, you are saying making mistakes is, an, is not a problem. But learning is, is really important. But not learning from mistakes is, is also a challenge. So designing desired behaviors and using goals to shape culture. And we'll see an example of how we can be able to use goals to shape culture as part of the KPI setting. So some organization go ahead and say, I'm going to set KPIs of 70% on the what, which is the core must have. But as an enabler to the organization culture behaviors, we're going to set it at 30%. So uh, 70, uh, 70 30 ratio from a values perspective, that's culture and the other 
to speak to the core business deliverables, which is the what. And then you go ahead and um, define undesired behaviors. So across the organization, because you're shaping culture and behavior and say attending meetings late is not acceptable. Procrastinating is not acceptable. Because we are an inclusive organization, interrupting others when they are speaking or shunning other people's ideas or perspective is not, does not encourage innovation, yeah? Does not encourage teamwork and collaboration. Yes. One minute. So everyone who is putting their email addresses on the chat, kindly, if you may, please don't. If you registered for the webinar, we have your email address and we will share the link to the recording uh, by the weekend. So, and I put our YouTube channel, you can subscribe, it will allow to. The reason why we are saying that is because we will actually lose the questions that had come if all the email addresses, we are about 400 people. If all the, everyone puts their email, then we won't see the question. So if you could indulge us, kindly, we have your email address because you registered to attend. Please allow us to finish the webinar and then we'll share the recording with you guys on your emails. Sorry to interrupt you, Lisa. Thank you. It's okay. Great. Thank you, Grace. So yeah, this one is very special because um, culture eats strategy for breakfast. It's just overemphasized and it's been said too many times, but it's true. So um, there are situations that you also want to define what are the acceptable behaviors, aggressive behavior that violates other uh, colleagues' rights within the workplace. You also want to define and say, those are undesired behaviors. So we speak in the context of moving towards and moving away from. So the desired behavior is move, moving towards and the undesired behaviors is moving from, yeah? Moving from the desired behaviors and moving toward the, moving from undesired behaviors towards desired behaviors. So yeah, I love examples. So uh, somebody can have an objective by saying improve collaboration and teamwork, yeah? How to move towards that behavior is listening keenly to various views. You are defining certain of those behaviors that you want to, seeking insights by probing to understand context and build alignment. So it means whenever that person is having a meeting, they will have it as a, a conscious competency kind of um, uh, objective. Listening keenly that I need to listen not listen to respond, <laughs> but listen to understand what the other person's perspective is. And then how do you get to measure that stakeholders feedback? So you may ask how, you, how are you going to get stakeholders feedback? So you can do stakeholders mapping in terms of the levels of interaction. So if it's a customer experience or um, executive, who are the team members that they service most? Yeah, close collaboration, because we also want to, te to build team synergies. Then within that context, and you also put the weighting and the timeline. For these behaviors, uh, my recommendation is you have it as continuous, but you measure it quarterly because it's a behavior we want to, to have all the time. So you have it continuous, but you measure it quarterly. Uh, in that context, then you can also develop uh, Kenya being a uh, Silicon Valley, yeah, yeah, tech savvy. So you can develop a tool to be able to measure this and feed the information. So you need to think through and say, if these are the desired behaviors, how do I develop a feedback tool that I can feed this behavior so that they're not like obsolete, yeah? Because every year you have new aspects. So you upload the behaviors that you need to measure and say, how am I gonna improve on this? How am I gonna get the stakeholders to share feedback? And one of the things that stakeholders can use to share feedback is you structure it in a way that you're asking how uh, the frequency of people demonstrating those behaviors, yeah? So um, you have a state, listen keenly to various views and seeks insights by probing to understand context and strives to build alignment as a statement. Then you ask the stakeholders in this context, how would you rate Kevin from demonstrating those behaviors? Um, how frequent are you seeing Kevin demonstrating those behaviors? So people can come and say, rarely, sometimes, most of the time, always. So you're designing measures like performance descriptors. We have common performance descriptors where you say, maybe somebody is fully achieved, outstanding, exceptional, all those ones. 
But now you link that to the behaviors that if somebody is rarely demonstrating that, then it can mean that person needs improvement. If the person is sometimes demonstrating those behaviors, you say they are in betweens, and it, it depends on how your performance descriptors are structured for you to be able to align to that. And there, those ones will be most of the time to mean that person is, is effective, yeah? Or they are highly effective if you use that as a performance descriptor. And if they are always demonstrating those behaviors, you can say they're exceptional. So when you go to the stakeholders, you're asking in this context, in this behaviors, how would you rate this person? How have you, have you observed this person? Because these this behaviors are observed either during meetings. One of the other aspects is enhance internal synergies and, re and reduce internal complaints. It can be like a colleague uh, is um, consistently having conflict with other colleagues. So then you intentionally shape the behavior by setting that objective. So first is uh, invest in learning on how to diffuse, to diffuse uh, confrontation. And you can go further and uh, build on this and say, um, enroll on a course uh, that uh, speaks to conflict management. Yeah, you are shaping behavior. So you can have um, multiple recommendations that can help shape behavior. And then you can say the success measure in that is reduction in internal complaints by 90%. So it means you have to have a structure in place within the environment to be able to measure complaints registered. It can be grievances that come through. It can be customer complaints. The customers, remember their internal customers and external customers, or the inter interdepartmental issues that come as a result of the member not collaborating with other team members. So there are no synergies. Then the weighting, you have to put the weighting and continuously reviewed quarterly. It's a behavior that needs to be demonstrated continuously, but reviewed quarterly. Uh, taking ownership of responsibility to improve productivity and execution. Yeah, uh, there are those situations where we find this one is be, uh, beyond my pay grade or this one is uh, in our Cuba. You know, those things that people shun away from, if it's a difficult conversation or it's complex stakeholders, they, are, they shun away from them. So you, you also want to push them to the area whereby they can be able to manage that or there's lack of ownership of the responsibilities assigned. So first is you go ahead and say in task execution, adopt a growth mindset um, by taking responsibility and accepting consequences. Maybe because they make mistakes, they shun away from it and say learning from mistakes. And in the process, maybe what is affecting the whole process is maybe they're not open to feedback. So part of the other measures you can say, being open to constructive feedback. And then go further and train your team on how to give feedback, yeah? So that the feedback is enabling feedback, not the feedback that is demoralizing to the colleagues. So you can also work around it and say, how do I structure uh, in a way that I am able to give constructive feedback? So what are the useful performance management tools that you can be able to use? Um, I think uh, the encouragement and the conversation we've been having is develop and customize tools uh, and uh, strategies that can support you to effectively manage performance. Uh, it can be performance catch-up templates because you need to have continuous, from a principal perspective, uh, feedback templates to guide your line manager staff. If you are HR professional, then you need to provide that guide uh, so that you make it a culture because you also always want to build a high performance culture. Priority planning. This one is a pain point across. If you have had employee engagement surveys globally, if you've checked out on the trends, Employee wellness is one of the key items. With the remote working, there's a lot of um, tension between uh, family and work. That there are no boundaries. So to me, it's very important to have priorities planned in advance so that people are able to know what is it that I need to do at what time. And it can also be able to enhance our productivity. Having a structure around performance improvement and having tools that support that. Um, having a clear performance cycle, of course, investing in continuous performance training and having personal development plans and having a behavior shaping uh, objectives and having assessment tools that can be able to help you achieve that. So what can help you build strategic alignment and performance if you are planning to do that uh, within your organization? Uh, between January and March, most of the time, some people do strategy planning in December. 
but the expectation is mostly for most companies by quarter one, you set objectives and you build alignment. So one of the key things that can help you build alignment is you can have a company-wide staff kickoff session where you can be able to marry and share what the vision of the organization is and energize the team to go for the goals that you have already set. In the co-creation of performance objective, involve the employees and make sure they contribute. Uh, you can get that from the PAL survey, you can get that from the performance feedback evaluation, all the information that comes through becomes very useful in setting up agility and uh, flexibility. In the current operating environment, uh, we need to be adaptive when goals move to mean there are things that may change and there may be emerging business needs that you had set that you needed to do this. And at that point, it made sense. But there is a legislative change uh, within for those organizations which are uh, regulated. Uh, and you have to make certain changes and adapt quickly and reset and reconfigure so that you're not having people having objectives that become irrelevant at the time of review and having those continuous uh, review. Identifying resources needed to achieve your objectives and goals uh, is also very important. And resources, we mentioned that it's both from a skills perspective and the working tools. We usually work very well with the tools, but we forget about the skills that are needed. So if there are future ready skills that you need to invest for your employees, make sure that your performance, um, your personal, de the personal development plans for the staff have that element, yeah? If it's uh, having digital skills for Salesforce and for them to be able to sell and you are, you are deploying softwares or systems that can be able to sell digitally, and you don't train them to, you don't enable them with digital selling skills, then your strategy will crack somewhere. So you will not be able to achieve your objective. So the synergies, the collaboration is key for you to be able to, to do that. Thank you very much, um, Tim, for listening to me. I, I, I hope you've picked a few things that you can be able to apply in your organization. I'll take it back to Chris, if there are any wow. questions. Wow, wow, Lisa, that is fantastic. And in as much as we have some people on the chat who I really cannot follow instructions, we appreciate the work that you have done. That, this is amazing. I, I mean, you have exactly what I was looking for when I decided we have to discuss this, uh, this topic. So thank you very much. And with this, uh, before we start taking on questions, we have quite a number of questions on the Q&A. Allow me to recognize the presence of Mr. Habat Zake. He's our partner in Kampala. He runs a company called Stead, Steadfast uh, Solutions, and uh, he's a consultant in HR and PR, human resources and public relations. So if you're in Kampala and you're stuck and you're wondering, what do I do with my people in Kampala, please? Uh, we can link you up with Habat Zake. If you need anything in Kampala, ask Sante Sana Habat for bringing the uh, Kampala team with us, and we appreciate you. All right, and it's good to see you, Catherine. It's good to see you, Kevin. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you for joining us right right now. I see Chahenda is also here. Uh, Chahenda, Yanni took you performance management to actually show up for our webinar this year. Where we? And uh, yeah, and uh, so thank you very much. And we are totally getting right, uh, getting it right. You know, our program is called Get It Right with Atara Solutions. If you're not getting it right, I don't know what you're doing. And uh, la right, allow us to jump right onto the question. There's a question, uh, Helen Motalia. <laughs> I am also here and following instructions. Yes, I recognize your presence, Madam Helen Motalia. Asante Sana for joining us. I've seen Jacinta Kisungi, uh, our followers from uh, the time we started. Grace Miner, Grace Miner logged in at 7.50 today. Uh, she's like, ah, Grace, Akuna. And then I've seen uh, Peggy Ngaira. I've seen, oh my God, you guys are awesome. Anywho, because I can't recognize everyone, uh, we need to move on and get the questions uh, asked. And of course, I want to invite you to the uh, HR coffee. We have a coffee date on the 10th of, of February at uh, Holy Family Basilica. Uh, this is being organized by the HR hub, and I hope to see you all there. And uh, right, let's jump on to the questions right now. Uh, Melissa Natemo is asking, who owns performance management in an organization? To you, Lisa. Lisa. Okay. Yeah, very good question. Um, 
first, the, the, the quickest or the simplest answer is everybody, yeah? The ownership, the ownership is for everybody. But of course, there's somebody who provides leadership. So from the CEO to the senior leadership team, they will provide that guide. But what works best is when everybody owns it. And I'm saying in this context that when you are assessing performance and talent and uh, trying to see how does this work, you say somebody's performance versus their potential. And then you can do the talent mapping. So if the person does not sh show up as the best version of themselves, then there's a disconnect, yeah? So show up for performance as an individual, contribute because it's something that we co-create together from the leadership team, from the leadership and across all levels. And, and Lisa, um, we had, we had, I've seen a lot of people, like HR is normally just left to do the, the performance management. It, it's just, everything is dumped on the HR. HR, um, I know we are supposed to be the advisors as regards to performance management, but who is involved in the process of setting, uh, or setting the goals? Okay. So remember the process doesn't start on setting the goals. The process starts from strategic planning, yeah? So when you do the strategy, everybody's involved, yeah? I don't want to say the bottom-up economy, but <laughs> you start from the floor up and the up. So you co-create together. There's feedback coming from the floor and there's the vision that the organization has and it marries the two. Then after that, the team co-creates KPIs for the business and say, uh, from strategic partnership, we want to do this. From a revenue perspective, we want to deliver this. And then the other team members will be able to come and say, what do we need to do if it's HR? They come up with a strategy and KPIs and say, from a HR, this is how we can feed into the overall business strategy. So having leaders co-create their functional strategies and KPIs within their functions, feeding into the strategy is very important. Uh, sometimes you may not achieve that because there's a lot of investment in training and shaping the culture that can be able to support that. But it starts from the strategy and then overall business KPIs, then functional KPIs. Each leader needs to own from a functional perspective. So you provide a guide. If you're a HR professional, you provide a guide on how that needs to be done. If you train people over time, it becomes fun because they are able to say, uh, this is what it is. And I missed to say something that I, I just remembered, that it's important to demonstrate how success looks like in terms of performance descriptors, yeah? And I mean performance descriptors, you have four descriptors or five descriptors or whichever. So there are those ones you may say needs improvement, um, uh, partially achieved, fully achieved, exceptional. Let me just use those ones. So if you have those, when you're setting objectives, and you're saying if you achieve a revenue of um, growth of 15%, then you are effective. You have done what you expected to do so that you don't have disputes later when you're having the review. If you do 25%, you are highly effective. If you do 30%, because remember the target was 15%. If you do 30%, then you measure and say, if you are able to do 30%, then you're outstanding. But you do anything less because you're also establishing a high performance culture. If you do anything less than 15%, then you need improvement. But you also check and say, what margins of error can I allow for uh, the needs improvement? Let, let me say, if somebody is above 90%, then you can say between 90% to 105, effective. Anything below 85 or 90% then becomes needs improvement. So defining that in the context of this is how uh, you would be defined as an employee, effective, outstanding, highly effective. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, there are a lot of questions about how to define uh, KPIs for the lower level staff. For example, I've seen two questions on uh, like a cleaner and a driver. What are some of the KPIs we can have for them? And this is a question from Patience and from Karemi. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you, Patience and Karemi. So let's take a driver in this case and uh, you are trying to look at what is it that they, they do. So if it's uh, making sure that the vehicle maintenance 
is, is, is servicing is within the servicing time because that's a tool of trade and they take care of that. Or you want to say you want to have zero accidents reported uh, within or you have a margin of error. So you can say um, provide executive services, maybe mostly it's the senior executives uh, with zero complaints uh, from the stakeholders and then you will get feedback from the stakeholders. Or you say having zero accidents as a result of uh, maintaining health and safety within that environment and making sure that you have zero accidents if it's a driver. And then the success is how many accidents were reported. That's a driver. It's a cleaner, it's the hygiene of the space that they are working because the objective is to maintain hygiene, yeah? So it can be the staff complaints about uh, certain things not being done, yeah? The stakeholders feedback. So you structure the KPI to the context of the role context of the role to me, if they are cleaning and they're cleaning toilets, for example, is the hygiene levels within that as a measure of success. I okay. hope uh, it, it provides a guide for you, Karimi, and uh, patients. Yeah, there's also another question of the same who was asking about secretaries and admin assistants. Yeah, same structure. Uh, mm. What is it that they need to deliver? Yeah, is it the, wait the waiting time? For visitors, is it managing the calendar or the number of clashing meetings that are planned for, you know, or it, it's the late communication of meetings. So you say structure meetings to fit the calendar within the stakeholders framework. And then you can say at that point is number of um, clashing meetings, reduce number of um, clashing meetings as a result. So if there are clashing meetings, it shows that they are not correctly managing their, their role. All right, and allow me to also remind you that we also have our own Nelson, Nelson Oguda. He is uh, he provides the metrics behind the scenes. He'll be able to guide you on on the metrics that you require. He also has a system that will support your performance management initiatives. Uh, this is a co uh, a software actually. So, in, if you're in Kenya, and for those who are uh, within East Africa or I think Nelson, you can go abroad. I mean, he has a he has an app <laughs> for yeah. for HR metrics, so HR analytics, and you can be able to look at that. Now, um, um, Lisa, there's another question. What is the difference between KPIs and OKR? Okay, yeah. So KPIs, it's key performance indicators. If you use that, <laughs> OKR is objectives and key results. So they, they take different structures on how they set the KPIs. OKR breaks objectives from functional. It's, it's very good for cascading objectives and creating alignment. So you'll get like from a functional, there's a string, yeah? There's a string building from the business side to functional, to team, to individuals within the team. So they say, what are the goals and what are the results? So it may not have the strong um, uh, timeline and all that, but it will have the cascading, breaking down from levels, from the business perspective, what are the objectives and what are the goals? And then it comes to the functional level and it comes to the team level because it has like team objectives. And then from the team objectives, you go to the individual members within that team. Key performance indicators is, for example, when you're saying a reduced turnover by, uh, employee turnover by 50%. That's a key performance indicator. But when you're looking at it holistically, you're looking at it from objectives and what are the results that will come out of it, yeah? Measures, deliverables, uh, results, uh, no, sorry, objective, which is a goal, uh, deliverables, what supports the objectives or the goal, and then you have the success measures. And then you add the weighting. The weighting helps you focus so that you are focusing on the right things, yeah? You are not chasing a 10% at the expense of 50% rating. The mission critical. These are mission critical objectives. All right. Uh, Nelson, somebody on the chat is asking for your number. Please uh, provide, they're looking for HRIS. Now, um, okay, I've seen you've seen that. Um, so, you know, we have, we have different, we have different, models for performance management. Today we were focusing on KPIs. Maybe you can also mention a few others that people can have a look at. Okay. So from, from my experience, 
you can have um, the OKR is, is usually good. There are guys who have the KPIs and I, I find it's like a KPI, not the full broad of KPIs. Either you get a one or you get a zero. And uh, a friend of mine was asking me, uh, so it's either I get one or I get a zero when they're doing uh, the review, because what is important is setting the objectives right. Whether you use OKI, whether you use KPIs, whether you use any other method, but the common ones that are common across is uh, the balance scorecard. Of course, there are those ones who break the strategic KPIs from financial, customer, people, learning and growth and governance. But the most important is setting the right objectives and saying even if it falls under uh, people and culture or whether it falls under customer or financials is it has the right measures, deliverables and success indicators. So you can choose to have the balance scorecard, you can choose to have OKR, you can use to, to choose to have the just general, the generic um, uh, performance uh, KPS setting, just like the one I presented. Okay, and then we have about four questions on the weighted. Uh, we have Sam who is asking about, um, uh, where is that question by Sam? He was saying, is there a recommended standard rating of KPIs or is it at a set? Uh, or it at that set at operational level. And then we have somebody else who's saying, how do you set goals for technicians? Uh, wait, uh, that's a different question. Um, uh, where is there one? I wanted to know the best change of culture. What is the procedure for putting employee in person? Uh, wait, wait for the objective should amount to 100%, right? Or can it be more than 100%? Yeah. So, is there a structure for weightage? Uh, the structure that will inform the weightage is the strategy. And what are the critical elements that need to be delivered? So when you are assessing an objective, it's how important that objective is to the organization. And the weighting that will be assigned to that objective will reflect that. Yeah. So the criticality or the importance of that objective will inform the weighting that is allocated. And that's why you'll get some objectives have 50% and others have like 5%. So, but I usually fight for people objectives to have at least more than 20% for everybody who is uh, leading a team because then they are able to focus on the right things to drive the team to deliver. Yeah, okay. so there, there's an agenda that a business is running and sometimes you can get that um, a business is putting a lot of weight on financials because that was important at that point, yeah? And having strategic KPIs, sometimes they can break the KPIs into financial KPIs, strategic KPIs, and people KPIs. And they say, because financial KPIs are mission critical, they're giving it 50%. And then we are giving 25% and 25% to strategic KPIs and people KPIs. Okay. And then um, we have another, we have two questions on, on culture. One is on rewards. Uh, how do you create a culture of performance with no reward, uh, especially when the board does not approve of a budget? Uh, how do you, how, what are some of the creative ways you can do that? And then um, how do you, how do you best change a culture in an organization to make them appreciate money, uh, performance management at ownership and ownership at all levels? which is probably the same thing as culture. And then how do you build a strong performance culture for project-based organizations? I saw those two questions on, uh, on uh, culture, uh, one for NGOs, which is probably what they're saying, project-based organizations. And then mm -hmm. there was one, there's of course the one where they don't have a budget for rewards. And then how do you uh, create ownership for this? Yeah, uh, as, as one of the pillars of performance is, is reward and uh, probably is first trying as much as possible to stakeholders manage so that you are able to align your performance to reward because the reason why organization exist is they want to be progressive and for them to be progress progressive they need to reward the team that is making them to be progressive um, if that is not possible there may be a few things that can help yeah in terms of internal recognition and then financial recognition programs that you can have internally. You can even buy a, a trophy, the most outstanding. And I see this commonly adopted within, um, uh, is it supermarkets? 
<laughs> and they say the outstanding employee of the year. But the truth is, as employees, they would prefer a reward assigned to the level of their contribution. So whether you are going to align your annual increases, if there's no bonus, then you can be able to align your annual increases to the performance <clears throat> levels of individuals. Yeah. So if somebody is outstanding, they get a slightly higher percentage as opposed to the person who is a needs improvement. So that way you can be able to do that. Building a culture where there are projects is where you do the sprints in terms of performance review. Yeah, you set within a project setting, you say these are the objectives and you review the team at the end of the project to see how successful was it. So you don't have to have a long, so this is where you adopt Agile and say, we are going to do a sprint and we're going to review the, the team according to the project that they've been able to deliver and then give them feedback. And sometimes where you have um, a lean budget, even personalizing it and making sure for the guys who have high potential, you enrich their role, you do internal promotions uh, depending on their potential and you're saying yeah, you can move them to different roles, uh, internal promotion, just giving them internal mobility and uh, enriching their role. But as much as possible, it's really important to attach performance because it's, you are trying to maximize shareholder value, but there are other stakeholders that you need to take care of. Okay, Kevin, I've seen somebody on the chat asking for the link to our WhatsApp group. Uh, you can share that again. And then I've seen some interesting contributions from Brenda and uh, Chahenza on the chat. And maybe I could also read uh, something that I saw that was interesting. I have seen uh, uh, Chenza saying there's no standard weightage uh, setting for any perspective or thematic areas. It's dependent on how critical to business success influence the weightage is. And I think Lisa alluded to that. And uh, yeah, so um, then Brenda says weights are also dependent on the role and the importance of the objectives on the specific role because a customer relations executive will have the customer pillars have more weight than their financials. I hope we have been doing the right thing. We don't have the same weightage across the roles. I hope that is clear to, to everyone. Um, uh, uh, Doreen, at how do we measure KPIs? I think Lisa had answered that. Uh, and then if you're looking to understand, uh, uh, what do we call it? If you're looking to understand the BSC, this is Balance Cocard. We did the one session with uh, Tibino Lieka, you can find that on our YouTube channel. And then, of course, we will upload this one on the YouTube channel as well. You can catch up uh, with the recording and listen to it and take your notes slowly as you make a summary and you look at how practical it is for you. And of course, if you're looking for consultants to help you with your performance management initiatives, please reach out to us. And then uh, Godric says, is it possible to split? Uh, Godric, first of all, it's good to see you here. And then he says, is it possible to split, um, uh, to split measure column into two that is measure column and target and target how do you ensure sp objectives are the basis of kpi across the board when cascading i don't know whether that's clear mm -hmm. uh, uh godric you may need to to clarify a bit um on on the question uh by rating the employee performance of an employee you can easily know the potential yes that will save so uh for those who are asking about our, our WhatsApp link, there it is. An anonymous attendee saying for Uganda, can Herbert Zake please share his number? I need his services. Uh, you can get my number and I'll share it with you. Um, Herbert, I don't know whether you're still on the call, but if you're the one, whoever it is that is looking for Herbert, uh, you can get my number or my email address and I'll share his uh, email uh, or rather his uh, contact details and then you can get in touch with him. And then uh, Brenda is saying, Brenda Wakaba. Uh, can we have a session two to expound more on the other aspects of performance management? I believe there's a lot to learn and Lisa is doing a great job with clarity in this area. Yes, we are the trend setter, so keep it here. We will have another session probably in the next quarter. Uh, next week, we are actually discussing, we are hosting Mr. D uh, Washiori, George Washiori, who is an author and the MD of um, uh, Optiven. He's going to share with us his story into entrepreneurship because I know most of us are headed that way. We are also preparing HRs to become business leaders. 
So we ought to learn from the other business leaders. So please, I hope you can join us next Tuesday. Uh, the next Tuesday. And of course, on Valentine's, we're discussing relationships. So uh, please join our WhatsApp uh, for quick uh, conversations. And then for the recording, Jacinta has already shared the, the WhatsApp, I mean, the YouTube channel. Uh, there was another question I had seen on, uh, where did it go now? Now, uh, there's this, we, we are always getting questions on technicians, uh, Lisa. The IT guys, the, 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 like for us, I, I deal with carpenters. Uh, how do you set their KPIs? What are some of the metrics we can use? Okay. So I, I am lucky I was a technician one day in my life. <laughs> so I, I'll just try to explain how I dealt with it. So I, I'll give an example so that it's, it, it can relate to whoever who is asking this. So you have technician context first. You have technicians who are either repairing tables or who are assembling tables or chairs and all that. So the quality of their work is really important. Um, to mean, you need to have no repeat work on assembling of the furniture or deliveries. It can also be the number of deliveries done within a day. So you may have technicians who are able to deliver, depending on the size of the delivery, you also measure that. And you say that the technicians were able to do 10 deliveries in a day and that those ones were able to do five deliveries. But the quality of their delivery would guide you on in terms of measuring their, their output. So you can set an objective that speaks to how they get to deliver. No repeat a, a customer experience. It can actually have an element of customer experience whereby you say, uh, deliver exemplary service to our customers in terms of uh, furniture delivery, yeah? And then you say, what will success look like? Uh, no repeat delivery as a result of damages. So you are taking care of the damages and no complaints as a result of work ethics because the technicians sometimes they can have challenges in work ethics. And you can even go ahead and add and say, after every delivery, there's a customer feedback that they will sign online, yeah? So after the delivery is done, you can just make work easier. And the customer, you set a, question, a set of questions and the, 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 the customer can complete those forms in terms of how was the delivery, uh, what's the work ethics in terms of the delivery um, and hygiene. By the way, that's important for technicians because they go to various places and then you, you review that from a feedback perspective. So the quality, the damages can, can be able to help you build um, an objective that is measurable. All right. all right, all right. And Kevin, what do we have from Facebook? Anything? Uh, thank you, Grace. Uh, thank you, Lisa, for this wonderful session. Uh, from Facebook, there's only one question uh, or, or two, definitely, from J uh, Juma Collins. And he's asking, what is the core role of HR in performance management? And uh, could you kindly elaborate on the KPIs for nurses in the health sector? Okay. Oh, that's an interesting field I haven't explored, but I'll just try to imagine. Because this is the year you imagine possibilities. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, if, if I was to develop I would develop a KPI around a nurse. It's the service delivery to the patient. So patient care will be an objective, yeah? So the patient feedback will be critical or uh, misdiagnosis or uh, wrong records. You know, the things that we get to hear that a patient was wrongly identified or just the mix up of patient and all that. So it's the patient care, focus on the patient care and the patient experience. So deliver, delight our customers from a patient care perspective. And what that means is the customer feedback from the patients who get to attend the, the place. But if you get more context, then you can be able to create a more concrete objective in that sense. But I'll, I'll focus it from a patient care and patient experience. And um, those errors, I don't know whether they're called misdiagnosis or Wrong, wrongly get, getting the, the wrong time of medication, the things that can make the experience of the patient feel like they belong and they, they can actually get better. 
Wow. And uh, Godric, I allowed you to talk. Maybe you can ask your question or give your comment. Uh, actually, on my comment, I was looking at the Lisa. Lisa, first of all, thank you so much for the presentation. And um, uh, Grace, uh, these are very important topic. I'm telling you, um, even if it's on a weekly basis, um, there are so many people suffering out there, really looking for answers in terms of performance management. So my question on when I looked at the sample objective uh, smart cascading that uh, that uh, table, you had the, the level, uh, you had the objective or stroke goal, and then the initiative stroke deliverables, and then measure weighting and all that. I was just trying to look at it from the end result. Well, at the end of the day, you need to evaluate this performance based on that. That's why I was looking at it in terms of splitting perform uh, the measure into the measure vis-a-vis -vis also the target, because I saw here you have combined the two, where you are saying percentage, for example, on um, the corporate level, the CEO level, uh, where you are seeing uh, growth by 7%. So my, my thinking was also maybe you look at it and say, the measure is a percentage, but the target is 7%. So that you look at it from the end results, you look at it and say, what was the target and what is the actual at the end of the day? And then the other thing I was looking at it in terms of, um, um, you know, uh, what you've just taken us through. Um, some of these uh, KPIs become, you know, they create what we call an intended outcome. For example, when you are saying the, uh, there is a, one of the KPIs, I really liked it in terms of uh, the recruitment, where you are saying on board three strategic partners, with 40% co co contribution. You see, that's very clear. It's not just onboarding within reducing the recruitment period from 90 to 60, but you're looking at the impact of those people you are recruiting because sometimes you can rush into, into reducing the, the, the time frame. but what is the outcome? The unintended outcome will might look like, um, you know, um, um, uh, the quality of recruits is not really appealing to you. It's like also saying, picking a receptionist KPI of saying, you know, um, you pick the call within three, uh, within the three rings. So assuming you are attending to another client and then you rush to release this other client so that you maintain the three. So the quality of that service is compromised because of the three rings you are, that are ringing in your mind. So sometimes these KPIs in terms of the measure we are trying to get might bring the intended outcome that might be negative as opposed to what you are looking at. That was my take. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the feedback. Contextualizing some of the objectives and the measures is important, but the point of measurement comes later because you're setting the KPIs to have clarity on what it is that you need to deliver but also breaking down uh, to different individuals. And uh, if we had given an example of a salesperson and we said uh, overall business, we needed to deliver 300 billion. And uh, when you break it down and cascade, maybe the line manager will have uh, 300 billion in a sales, a general manager sales and distribution. But when you cascade it to different BDMs, one can have 100 billion, another one 100 billion to make the 300 billion, depending on the context. So yeah, I agree with you and uh, thanks for bringing that uh, uh, within the context. Uh, thank you, Tekla Adeka. Tekla? Tekla Adeka, your hand is up. Okay, Evelyn Kim, your hand is up. Evelyn? Irene, please go ahead. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Lisa, for the presentation. Um, I really wanted this to be clarified. There's someone who asked about waiting and uh, waiting on KPI. So I will try and talk about customer service. So if you are looking about customer uh, to, uh, we are reviewing customer service and we are trying to set their KPIs. So my, what I understand is that for customer service, they have their own KPIs. And there was a question on total waiting. So say, for example, they have three KPIs, customer CRM, then there is something on financial and maybe something on internal business processes. And uh, CRM is the highly weighted, say 50%. And then internal, uh, internal relations is uh, 20. And then 
financial is 30%. Why am I saying this? Because all my, the time I've always understood that at the end of the day, the total KPI for a job group or a specific job being evaluated should be 100%. So there was that question that, yes, you, you, you answered that uh, waiting depends on how important a role is or how important a KPI is which is understood, but what is the overall? At the end of the day for this job group, what should be the overall? That is my first question. Then the second one would be on attitude. I have been in a situation, I've worked in companies where you join a company and performance management do not make sense. It's more of a formality. It's more, we are doing this for the HR. We are just doing this thing. It does not add value. How do you change attitude of the organization to embrace performance management and to see how important it is because it becomes an issue if it starts from the CEO. The CEO tells you, it's not important, we're just doing it for formality. You know, we just do it for the sake of the processes. How do you work towards achieving, uh, being in a place where everyone appreciates performance management, they take ownership and uh, take it as a responsibility of each and every individual. Okay, I, I can go, Grace. Okay, I'll start by recommending that we send the CEO for Nelson's classes <laughs> to get to understand how to measure. Uh, first, the attitude. Yeah, uh, it can be challenging if you have a top leader within an organization, uh, having that kind of attitude towards performance management. So uh, first, don't give up, is try gradually to coach the person. And one of the things I've learned is coaching doesn't mean that somebody needs to be senior than you. You can actually be a junior person coaching a senior person. So coaching and having conversations uh, to, to shape their behavior uh, towards the direction you want to be. So um, if, if you get to a situation where everybody is having that attitude, maybe getting other people from other organizations, like you get subject matter experts in different topics to come and talk to the organization because that's how then you get to shape behavior. If you get to know that there are CEO forums and HR forums where the role of HR is being positioned, then you strongly recommend for that person to go. Where you get within the team that there's nobody who thinks this, this is a, an important, it's you create the why uh, behind the performance because the organization exists because it wants to make impact. And impact can be from a development perspective for NGOs, uh, community impact for other organizations, it can be profits. So you can say people profits and uh, any other thing that comes along with that. So it's trying to influence them and shape them to get to be receptive to the performance approach and then demonstrating why it is important. And that's why we started from the context and we said, why is it important? Yeah. Why do we need to be clear? Because if you are doing it as a ticker box, it means even that CEO will fail because when they are reviewed as a CEO, what legacy are they leaving within that organization? So if working hard to shape and coach the leaders and somebody asked what's the role of HR guidance and I saw somebody asking, what does guidance mean? So as HR, you are a coach. You can actually be a performance coach to your organization. And by coaching, I mean you are the checker in terms of alignment from a strategic alignment, you can support in terms of translating strategy into KPIs. So from a HR business partnering perspective, uh, if you have a partner attached to either sales and distribution or production, their role is to shape the conversations and make sure that they're able to set smart objectives which are aligned to the strategy. So build that relevance by being close to the business and uh, providing them focus when it comes to performance and people-related issues. All right, all right. Uh, do you realize we can be here all night long? Uh <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yes, allow me to just say, I know this conversation, we may not be able to conclude on it today, but we promise to bring in another session on, on performance management. But uh, we will have to upload this, we will upload this link on our YouTube channel, which is Get It Right to the Tara Solutions. And the team had posted the link. I know Kevin is about to, or Jacinta is about to post it again. 
Of course, if you want to know what is happening on Get It Right with Atara Solutions, we are here every Tuesday discussing different topics uh, that affect employers and employees. Uh, you can just set your alarm today and you never have to miss another session ever, ever again. But uh, um, allow me to just do something before we can... Uh, we can actually um, ask Lisa to give us a parting shot. Allow me to recognize our partners. Uh, we have Balcon Housing, uh, we have Talion Construction Company, we have Pathway Solution Services, we have IPM, Institute of Pension Management. For HR professionals who are here and wondering when to do, where to do your CHRP courses, then uh, please uh, start with the Institute of Pension Management. Uh, we have Panessa Training Institute, we have Wiklin, we have Suluhu Mediation Center for those who want to become certified professional uh, mediators. Uh, we have Profiles International for those of you who are looking to become Genos uh, certified EI practitioners. Uh, if you want to become an emotional intelligence practitioner, we have a class starting in February. Please sign up for that class. Uh, it is offered by Profiles International. Get in touch with me and I'll be able to link you up. Then we have Elsa Mea. Elsa Mea is a conservation center located in Naivasha. It's a beautiful place for a holiday. By the way, you and your Mr. Mr. and Mrs. or your girlfriend, your stolen goods or your official goods, you, you're looking for somewhere to hang out this Valentine's, then Elsa Mea would be your place. That place is beautiful. I won't lie to you. Check them out on Facebook. I'm sure you will understand what I'm talking about. And the food is mwah, delicious. And they also grow their own vegetables. Can you imagine? And then we have Kapula Minchinto and we have Papas. And then, of course, we're inviting you to the HR management uh, coffee uh, on the 10th of, um, 10th of Friday, 10th of February. Uh, this will take place at Holy Family Basilica. It's being organized by HR Hub. And of course, some of us are still partners in there. And then, of course, we have the Suluhu Mediation Center. They want to become a certified professional mediator. They have a class coming up in Nakuru. And then please join our session on the 9th, 9th February, Thursday 9th from 9 to 12 noon at only 2,800. We are discussing the legal framework on discipline management at the workplace with one and only uh, Roblin Godrek. Uh, right. So, uh, yes, on how can we reach Atara Solutions? I think the team has... Wait, Kevin, uh, there's somebody asking how to reach Atara Solutions. Uh, you can join our WhatsApp group, you'll see my number there. And uh, you can even check on the contacts, the admins, you can reach out to them. Uh, Purity, or you can email me. The, I think my email was used to respond to your... To your, to your, to your uh, registration link. I don't know whether Sami at all you wanted to speak before Lisa gives us her parting shot. Yes, and uh, yes, I'm being told Anwa Monde will recognize your presence. I've also seen our client Pendo Tips. Pendo Tips, we appreciate, uh, we appreciate your presence as well. If you're looking for uh, Daktari, she sells a lot. You can check out Pendo Tips. For those of you who are naturalistas, uh, hair, to 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 whatever it is you're consuming for you know we want to live long right Lisa your parting shot I was not prepared for that <laughs> those ones who know me they know that I'm a very shy person uh, but I will not talk much but thank you very much for the opportunity for the team that joined I I I, I love the session that we were able to discuss I I love the contribution from the teams. One of the things I'd like to encourage you to do is um, we are history. We are the history so that the future doesn't doubt. To me, in whatever that you get to do as an individual, because I'm an advocate of self-development first as you build yourself and you get to improve yourself every other day. So you compete yourself with the version of yesterday. So invest in yourself and work <coughs> towards getting better every day. And do have a great evening to Grace. Asante Sana for the opportunity to share with the team and Kevin and Catherine. I think you guys are doing a fantastic job. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lisa. Kevin, you have something to say? Uh, not quite. I just wish to, uh, to, to, to emphasize on what Lisa has mentioned. Uh, HR performance management is not only about HR. It's an engaging session, and uh, that would mean it involves everyone. Uh, you, as the person who is doing the implementation, plus and your supervisor, together with the HR. 
that is what we will bring about teamwork and that is what is going to bring about your success and the success of the organization back to you guys thank you thank you very much kevin you are awesome i have seen uh sami atwali before i compliment kevin sami okay all right i think we can we can move on from that uh kevin as uh, people are saying that you have really come a long way and <laughs> <laughs> I'm very proud of you uh for being an awesome mentee and I think at this uh, I am wait I'm waiting for for February when we start doing uh, my schedule get busy and then you're taking the mantle to the next level so I'm excited and looking forward to you hosting the sessions as well so allow us to thank you for being here i have seen we had quite a good number on facebook as well we actually got to over 400 people on zoom so it, this tells us that this is an important important topic and we will try and make sure that we are trend setting along this I've seen a question on performance contracting i've seen a question on so many things around performance uh don't worry you start slowly and you will get there so without further ado thank you very much see you next week uh tuesday from 8 p.m to 9 p.m we shall be hosting mr one george washiori he's an author he is the md and director of uh, optiven uh he'll come and share with us his story uh, we are saying that all employees and especially especially hr professionals have to become business leaders so we need to learn how business leaders think what their journey has been like and that's why we are hosting a renowned business um, man uh, in the in our society so uh we are hosting a uh, um uh, George Washiori next Tuesday and the Tuesday after that uh, we will be discuss we are hosting a relationships coach uh, coach uh for those of you who will have gone to Elsa Mayor for your valentines you can still log in we will help you make your relationships better uh for those of you who will be going to Elsa Mayor that weekend uh, please keep it here and uh we shall see you as soon as uh, every Tuesday from 8 pm to 9 pm otherwise from us uh please follow us on Instagram at Jara Solutions like our facebook page atara solutions subscribe to our youtube channel get it right with atara solutions join our whatsapp group to get updated on everything that you need to know on what's happening on atara solutions and get it right with atara solutions and of course we normally have discussions besides the the tuesday sessions uh supporting uh people in employment supporting the job seekers uh, supporting uh, uh business owners there's a lot we, we actually have one of the groups that is very dynamic uh my friend tells me i am coming to atara solutions because i will meet people beyond my circle you know I, you cannot only be friends with hr professionals we need everyone so we are one group that en- encompasses everyone and we encourage people to grow so please don't forget to do that uh w- from us it have yourself a lovely evening and um, unfortunately our sign language interpreter technology issues but um our team uh please understand and we apologize that we have technical issues but i hope that uh, we we will do better next week for sure for sure so thank you very much and i was your host my name is grace nzula moderator of choice see you next tuesday bye bye